hey guys this is it from brevity and today we're going to look at a very interesting lead code question maximum consecutive ones so the problem statement is actually quite simple we'll be given a array with zeros and ones and we need to return the longest continuous subarray which just has ones and here's the catch we can change up to k values from 0 to 1 so i'll give you an example here uh, consider you have an array so we need to find the length of the longest array which just has ones so here in this case this array 1 1 1 and 1 has just ones so this could be the longest subarray but the catch is we can change up to k values from 0 to 1 so here in this case the k is 2 so we can change two zeros to one. So this was the original array and we're changing this zero to one and even this zero to one. So a new subarray becomes a zero one 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 zero and we can allow up to two zeros to be in the array. So the new length we written here is six. So now let's try to implement this in Python. So to solve this problem, we're going to use an application of the two point algorithm known as sliding window. So if you want to understand how sliding window works for this problem, you can check out my friend's Vignesh video where he explains this beautifully, it should be right on top. So meanwhile, I'll just uh, keep waiting. So now let's try to implement this using Python. So the first step is to obviously initialize both the pointers. So I'm having a pointer i which points to the zeroth index and the pointer j which also points to the 0th index. Now every iteration we need to keep track of the maximum length. So I'm having a variable uh, mx for maximum length uh, and I'm initializing it to 0. So every iteration if the new length increases we are basically updating the mx variable uh, in each iteration. So as the example we saw before every iteration we are basically incrementing j pointer by 1 and if the number of zeros exceeds the limit, the limit here is k, we are incrementing i pointer till the limit comes back to uh, the k limit. So the first step is to have a while loop for the j pointer. So it goes like this, while j less than length of array. So we are, do, we are incrementing j pointer till it goes to the last index. And for every iteration, we have to increment j pointer by 1. So now we have to check for one condition. If the new incoming value j point is pointing to 0 or 1. Because if it's 0, we have to decrement the k limit by 1. So if the new value, which is a of uh, j, is 0, what we're doing here is decrementing the limit by 1. So why we're decrementing? So we're decrementing so that if the limit comes less than uh, 0, so if we're initializing k to 3, and every time we're having uh, 0, we are decrementing uh, it by 1. So every time we are reducing it, and if the limit goes below 0, we know that uh, the number of zeros is more than what it's supposed to be. So we're having a decrementing k by 1, and if the k limit if k goes less than zero what we are doing here is we are basically incrementing i pointer till it comes back to normal so we can uh, automate this process you can say using the loop so we can just use a while loop and if k less than zero we are incrementing i by one till uh, the k goes back to uh, where it is supposed to be so if the new value which is a of i equal to 0 we are incrementing k by 1 and we do this till k goes back to normal so we are incrementing i pointer in this case so so every iteration uh, j point i point is ready so now we need to uh, find the maximum length in each iteration and update it in the maximum variable so to do that i can just use a variable mx equal to max of the maximum length so far and the new length is j minus i plus 1. So now we can just return the maximum length mx and I think that's it. Uh, we can just run this. As 
as you can see the code runs and it's actually quite fast so now to understand the time complexity for this code so the time complexity of this code is o of n because the j pointer is moving from the zeroth index to the last index and i pointer is also moving from zeroth index to up to almost the last index so we are just having up to n passes uh in the loop so you might get confused because you might see two loops so you might think it's n square but no we are only going up to n iterations and the space complexity in this case is o of 1 because we are not having any extra array or a list we are just having three extra variables in this case so the space complexity is o of 1 because it's no matter how big the input is we always just have three variables it's constant so thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for more sliding window videos